Hello everybody, Noel from Scratch Genius here. I am finally back with another tutorial. I am so sorry it has taken me very long to get back. Although here I am with Geometry Dash. As you can see, it is pretty nice. I tried my best to get it as close to the real one as possible. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Although, first of all, I want to give a big, big shout out to Demonix Games. Thank you so much for helping me with some pretty big bugs in the game. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So here we are in an empty project. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and name the sprite player. Then I'm going to go to event, drag in a one green flag clicked block, and then a broadcast start. We are doing this because most scripts are going to start with when I receive start. That way we can easily respawn the character if the character dies. So before we start making the jumping mechanic, we first need a floor. So I'm going to go, paint a new sprite, and call it Floor. Then I'm going to go and draw a simple black rectangle near the bottom third of the screen. Now to make the player jump. So to do that, we're going to simply create a variable called Y Velocity for the player, and so that way it would keep track how fast the player is going. Then each frame until it is touching the floor, it's going to change the Y by Y Velocity, and then it's going to increase the y-velocity so that we can give this really nice speeding up effect. Just like in real life. But now we have a problem. As you can see, the player is touching the floor and is overlapping with it. And we don't really want that. We want the player sitting nicely right on top of the floor. So to do that, we're going to use a custom block with the on-screen refresh option turned on. And so what our on-screen refresh block is going to do is that it's going to check if the player is touching the floor, then it's going to move up a tiny bit if it still is. And it's going to do that again, and again, and so on, until it is finally touching the very top of the floor. After doing all of that, then the frame is going to render. So we're not going to see any of that from the player overlapping and then moving all the way back up. We're just going to see this, the nice finished result. So let's go ahead and implement this in our project. So the first thing we should do is go and create the y velocity variable. Then once we receive start, we should set y velocity to zero. Then we should also set our position to something like x minus 100 and y zero and reset our rotation. Then we can now create our custom block. I'm going to call it something like gravity and make sure to check run without screen refresh. Then I'm going to drag the define block over here, and then I'm going to make it so forever, it will run gravity. Then in gravity, we're going to do what we said we were going to do earlier, which is change y by y velocity, and then we're going to change y velocity by something like minus 1. Then we're going to check if we're touching the floor. So we're going to go to control and if touching floor, well then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat until we're not touching the floor. Change y by one. And then we have to make sure we're setting y velocity back to zero. So now if we go ahead and test this, you just see that we have a pretty nice gravity. So now to make it so that the player can jump by pressing something like spacebar, all we have to do is go if key space pressed, we're then going to set the velocity, y velocity, to something like 10. Now if we go ahead and test this, you should see that we can jump. Cool! Now, at this point, we probably want to start replacing the cat in the floor with actual Geometry Dash sprites. So, you can make your own, or you can use my bad art from this empty project I created with all of the art that you guys will need for the Geometry Dash. Link is in the description. Ah, much better. So now to make the cube turn. So it's actually really simple. All we have to do is make it turn something like 16 degrees. Then, to stop the cube from spinning like this, what we're going to have to do is that if it is touching the floor, we're going to point in direction. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to grab our direction, 
divided into 90. Then we are going to round it. Then we're going to multiply it by 90 again. Pretty much what this does is that it will snap the cube's rotation to the nearest 90 degree angle. So we're going to point in that direction. And we're going to point in that direction if we are touching the floor. Nice! So now if we jump, you can see that the cube spins, and then it would snap to the nearest 90 degree angle once it touches the floor. And of course, play around with the numbers, like the gravity, how fast it turns, and how high it can jump. The values I would recommend is minus 2.81 for the gravity, 16 for the turning, and 20 for the jump force. Now here's a pretty big bug that you might have not noticed yet. You can jump in the air, and that's a pretty big problem. So to fix that, all we have to do is instead of having key space pressed, we have to check if the key is space pressed, and if our player velocity equals zero. The only time our player velocity would be zero is if our player was sitting on top of the floor. So that works out pretty well. So now we can no longer jump in the air. Awesome! One last thing I want to do before I finish this episode is adding a background. To do this, I'll create a new sprite and call it background. And so here I put in my background costume. An important thing to note while making your backgrounds is make sure that the edges stitch together nicely. What I mean by this is make sure that if you put both sides next to each other, it fits together nicely, just like that. So now to make the background scroll. To do this, when the green flag is clicked, it is going to create a clone of itself. Then, when it receives start, it is going to forever go to y is going to be 0, and then x is going to be timer multiplied by 100. And it's going to be that mod 480. This is temporary. We're going to change it in episode 2. I'm also not going to explain exactly what mod does in this video, but in the future I will make a video on that. Anyways, now we're going to duplicate this and put it under uh, when I start as a clone. Now all we have to do is change this from 480 to minus 480. We also have to make sure that the background goes in the back layer. So now if we test this, you probably have to click the green flag twice, and ta-da! It works! Awesome! So that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so so much for watching. I know we don't have much right now, but don't worry, episode 2 and episode 3 will add a ton. If you guys really like this series, I might make a part 4 and maybe even a part 5, adding even more features to the game. I also now have a Discord server, so if you want to join that, the link is in the description. And that's pretty much it. See you in the next video.